If you haven't heard the latest news, Flycast has gotten rollback support for Naomi 2 games, namely Virtual Fighter 4, which is the system's flagship game. This new build of Flycast Dojo will allow you to play with a friend either through direct IP connection or the match codes feature, both of which are in the public staple builds of Dojo. I'm going to walk through a quick installation of the new build so you can get up and running with a friend quickly instead of having to muck about with files. Firstly, go to this website I have pulled up here. The links will be in the description of the video. This is the first test update on the Dojo GitHub. Scroll down to the bottom and click on either of the zip links depending on your operating system. For Windows, it's going to be the top one here, and for Linux, it's going to be the bottom one here. Once you have the zip file, extract it to a drive and folder of your choice. The zip file should already have a folder with all that you need inside of it, but you can rename that folder to whatever you want. This should be what your folder looks like when all is extracted. As you can see, I've renamed the, uh, the base folder here. You'll need external files that you cannot get without dumping or searching around and asking someone. I cannot legally distribute files, but I can tell you what you should be looking for. First, you'll need a BIOS. This BIOS file will be called Naomi2.zip. You're going to need to drag it into a folder labeled Data. Next, you will need ROMs to play each game of your choosing, and the setup, depending on what type of game it is, is different. There are two types of games that came out on Naomi platforms. These are cart games and GD-ROM games. We're going to go over the cart games first because those are a little simpler to set up. Our example here will be VF4 EVO CT. You will simply need a zip file of your game. This one is just Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution. It's not version A or B or anything. You'll need to drag it into the folder that matches the zip file name. So this folder would be called VF4 Evo CT after the zip file. Then you're done and you can launch the ROM. For GD ROMs, the setup is a little different. You'll need a CHD file with your game on it. This CHD file will have two zeros and then another number or two denoting which game it is and an extra level letter denoting revision. For this example we're going to be using Final Tuned as it only ever came on GE-ROM. This is the version A revision of the game so if you have a folder that's named something slightly different that's why. I'm using the version A installation that I have because it's a little bit cleaner than my version B one and I'll explain why here in a moment. The setup that I have involves zipping up two files and putting those same two files in another labeled folder of the game of your zip. For version A, it's going to be called VF4 tuned with an extra D at the end here. And for version B, which is probably what you're going to be playing, it's going to not have a D at the end. It's just going to be called VF4 tuned. No uppercase, no capitals, anything like that. What's inside the zip file will be two files. It's going to be your 317-0387-com.pic. For the sake of everyone's sanity, I will distribute this file. It can be a bit of a pain to find because it's usually only in really old DMOL installations people have shifted around every now and then. I also have my GDS file here. As you can see, here are the, ze here are the two zeros, the numbers that follow, and then the letter at the end denoting the revision. Zip those up and then create another folder of the same name. This one will have both of these files too. Again, I'm sure there is a cleaner way to install this. In fact, I think you just leave the chd file in here and then you zip up the .pick file. But this is the setup that works for me and it's the one that I've tested often and I've had no problems with this specific kind of setup so far. Now for settings. Flycast Dojo detects your ROM locations automatically, so you do not need to set up content locations unlike in the standalone builds. Firstly, I'll go over the basic button settings for a regular controller. Go to Settings, and then go to the Controls submenu. Click on the controller that you wish to use. Make sure it's on port A so it works with rollback. Click on Map, and it should take you to the Control Mapping menu. 
click on the drop-down labeled Arcade Controls. Well, it should say Dreamcast Controls, but click on Arcade Controls. Then, you'll notice that there is buttons 1 through 8. Button 1 should be set to X or Square. Button 2 should be set to Triangle or Y. And Button 3 should be set to A or Cross, depending on if you're on a PlayStation or Xbox controller. Button 6 doesn't matter. You don't need to use it. These other controls are very self-explanatory, so you don't need to worry about them. There are macros that you can use on GamePad, though. Most of the, uh, the combinations that you can use are covered, so if you're on a GamePad, I highly recommend you bind these to some buttons on your controller. Next are the video and emulation settings. In the settings menu, go to the video submenu. You're going to see options under transparent sorting. Right now, per triangle is not very well optimized compared to per strip and per pixel. Per pixel generally has better transparency sorting, but per strip has slightly better performance. Triangle is the worst of both worlds, so don't pick it. Next, you're going to want to go to advanced settings. Don't mess with CPU mode. Interpreter really is very slow. If multi-thread emulation is not already toggled on, toggle it on, especially if you have a quad-core PC or better. Once you're done with those, you can mess around with the widescreen settings and the internal resolution rendering. Don't mess with horizontal stretching. Internal resolution only goes by 0.5 in steps. I like using two times 2.5 because it offers me clarity while also using the most of my monitor without really going overboard. You don't really need most of these other settings, unless if you have a higher resolution monitor, of course. Also, just a very quick note, OpenGL is the only graphics API that works at the moment. Now that you have all that set up, it's time to actually play online. There's going to be a drop-down menu here with four options, Offline, Host, Join, and Train. You don't need these two, Offline and Train. Offline, obviously, is Offline Play, and Train is the training mode. You'll only need Host and Join to play with other people. We're going to use Host for demonstration purposes. To host a game, click on Host and then click on one of these games. A white label on a ROM means that you have a net save state for it already. Yellow one means you don't. Let's click on version B as this is the one that already comes with a save state. Click on it and wait for it to load. It does take a little bit. You'll be waiting for your opponent to connect but this is where you share your match code. If you haven't already, turn on your match code settings in the Dojo submenu. What you do here is you copy the match code and then you send it to another person. That person will then have their own prompt to put in the match code. When they type it in, or copy and paste it in, then Flycast will connect you both and you'll be able to play the game. If you're on the joining side, this is what the prompt will look like. You'll be able to paste it immediately into your, into your prompt here. When you've pasted in your match code, just click on Start Session, and then it'll give you a slider to choose your delay. Once this delay is chosen, it'll launch you into the game. I can't leave you without some VF footage, so here you go. This is it running on Flycast, and as you can see, it looks pretty good. I hope you find this video very informative, and that it helps you set up Flycast so you can start playing with your friends.